Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, that was uh, one of the nicest introductions I've had. Um, Representatives Takano and Meng, I don't think are here yet. We'll be joining you later. Uh, to all who've joined together today at Arlington, thank you. Thank you for including me uh, in this great day. It's an honor to be with you. Here at Arlington, we see how much we have asked from so many across our history. In the 400,000 blocks of Vermont marble on these grounds, we see the names of men and women, Christians, Jews, and Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, and non-believers. We see names of those whose family came over on the Mayflower. We see names of Americans whose family arrived on slave ships. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, gay and straight, their fidelity to our nation is the tie that binds them. And it reminds us of our common obligation to honor them, the values they fought for, and for all those who continue to serve. We ask much of our service members and their families, from working to deter Russian aggression with European allies, to providing a, st a foundation for stability in the Pacific, to serving as the backbone for our counterterrorism mission. Our soldiers alone are serving in more than 140 countries worldwide. For our army and military to accomplish this diverse set of missions, we need our men and women in uniform to harness the power of diverse teams. We need experience, critical thinking, and creativity in our force. But most importantly, we need teams of people who think differently from one another and yet are joined together in common cause. And when the people of the world see the ability of the American people to join together, reflecting every part of this country and every thread of our American fabric within our military, they see the power of our example. And it is both the power of our example and the example of our power which makes our military the most powerful fighting force in history. At this forum today, we celebrate and recommit ourselves to that power of the American example. And for more than 150 years, from almost as soon as men and women from Asia began arriving in the United States, Asian Americans began defending the United States. Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have contributed to the power of our example and the example of our power. It's a tradition that dates back to the Civil War to soldiers like a young man named Ching Lee, who enlisted at the age of 16. Taking the adopted name Thomas Sylvanus, he fought for the Union at Mine Run, Spotsylvania, in Cold Harbor. He would receive one of his unit's highest honors, keeping the flag of the 81st Pennsylvania Regiment flying in battle as its color bearer. Ching Lee was wounded and captured in the final year of the Civil War, he would endure the brutality of imprisonment at Andersonville in Georgia. And when peace was signed at Appomattox, he would come back home to Pennsylvania, where he started a business and built a family. He served his country nobly, but it was not until more than three decades later that he would become a citizen. And it was not until several years ago when Representative Mike Honda of California began to look at service records of Asian Americans that his story was remembered. When I read about the determination of Americans like Ching Li to serve and contribute to this country, I think about the new Americans who became our fellow citizens, become our fellow citizens nearly every day. I think about the more than 160 men and women from more than 40 countries who I congratulated two weeks ago after they took their oath to the Constitution and became citizens. What I saw in these new Americans is what I look for in every formation of soldiers. I saw grit, resilience, and determination. I saw the essential qualities that renew and revitalize our nation in every generation. It is because of the paths we've created for men and women like these to reach this country, for their children to realize their dreams in this country, that we remain the strongest and greatest nation the world has ever known. Over the course of the past several years, we have taken down several barriers to opportunity. 
so that more Americans can make a contribution in our military. For the force of tomorrow to remain as strong as the force of today, continuing on this journey will be critically important. We need to draw from the largest pool of Americans best, America's best, to continue to innovate and succeed, to continue to fight and win and protect our nation amid the complexities of the 21st century. And we, all of us, must continue to be vig vigilant. Here at Arlington, we can understand our road ahead in the context of a rich and complicated history. We see our journey toward greater opportunity as a military from a broader context than the last eight years. We see the story of how we solve problems as a military is about more than the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It's about more than opening up combat roles to women, or even the most recent step forward, opening military service to transgender Americans. It's a larger story about how the military tackles issues that others consider too big and too difficult. Desegregating after World War II, 16 years before the Civil Rights Act, or providing equal pay to women in the military 40 years ago, long before they were welcome in much of our workforce. When critics said our military was too set in its ways, too big, or too afraid to move forward with change, our men and women in uniform proved them wrong. In the process, they've proved what's right about our country. Today, when critics say the military is not a place for social experimentation, they may be right. But equality and inclusivity are not experiments. They are American values. Our military's ability to move forward should give us hope as a country that though our struggle continues, we can find solutions together. To many of you with us here today who served and continue to serve, thank you for your continued contributions. To all here today, thank you for your work to ensure that we continue our journey as a nation, that we continue with our march forward as a nation, providing greater opportunity for all who serve and make their contribution. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me, and thank you for your service.